What a stretch it's been for Falcons franchise. We are on a four game win streak, improving to six and six. And basically every team in the NFC South has the same record. Panthers are nine and three, but the rest entirely six and six, including the team we're going to play today, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They are a bit all over the place. Baker Mayfield's going to be their starting quarterback, but I think we're playing so well right now that it shouldn't even matter. <laughs> because he's so good, obviously. Now, the defense is rated fairly highly. They're an 85 overall. But I wonder what this offense is going to be capable of. The receivers, obviously, are quite good. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. The offensive line's pretty solid as well. However, I really don't know what they're going to be able to do behind what I expect to be not much of a running game and maybe not much of a passing game either. You have some player upgrades to kick this episode off and they're not significant, so never mind. A movable object, playing a top NFL defense, Vita Vea, Levante David, could be a challenge, but the running game is consistently the best way for us to move the football. We run the damn ball. It's not about throwing, it's not about getting fancy with this new age crap that NFL teams try to do. Got to beat the Bucks and rush for 125 plus yards on offense. Well, we're not going to rush for that on defense. So I do like that uh, qualifier and clarification. And I think I think we're going to be able to do that. And maybe not easily, but I, I think we're going to be able to do that. I will say, though, after the last game, I thought Jeff Okuda played very, very well and is worthy of a contract extension. He's just 24 years old, of course, former top five pick. Jeff Okuda... What do you say? Do you want to stay in Atlanta Falcon? Nope. Well, we're going to work on that. Now, I could see Cordero Patterson staying here for another year. Staying local from South Carolina. Of course, Georgia touches South Carolina for you uh, geography experts. Is this an excuse to rip a GeoGuess around? You know what? It might be. Just one round, one picture, no moving, panning, or zooming. Ten seconds. So we got to be quick about it. And I would just say this is Mexico. Kind of a boring round. Uh, when in doubt... Somewhere around Mexico City, and that is the answer. All right, back to your regularly scheduled programming. For Daryl Patterson, 32 years old, still is an 85 overall and very valuable to us as an overall player. I don't really want to do a two-year deal, especially if he's still going to be a receiver for us. Kind of like a hybrid right now. Got a lot more touches last game as a running back, and I liked it. He played very well. He's going to regress. I'd like a one-year deal. I'll give you a little bit more money. I can understand it. How about that? And Cordero Patterson returns. Huge week last week, and now we got him locked up for another season. Gonna try to defend the short pass against Baker, make the football come out fairly quickly. Hey man, this Bucks defense looks really, really good. Gonna try run outside though. And fatigue is starting to set in a little bit here. Gonna leave the backups getting these reps, go half pads. I need my guys to stay healthy and as not fatigued as possible. One play away with Clark Phillips. Give me a little deflection here. He's gonna throw it over. Oh, not complete. I think we would have had it anyway on this next one. Just cause usually they don't get two on you in a row too often, but probably no dev trade upgrade. We'll take a little bit of XP. And as I said in the last episode, I'm not gonna use my staff points to get any more slots just yet. It will eventually happen but not at the moment. It's amazing how easy this drill becomes when you can actually tackle the quarterback. It's incredible. <laughs> no more Desmond Ritter breaking every single tackle. Every He has eyes in the back of his head every time. It's such a nice change. You get this multiplier. There's gold. And unfortunately, no dev trade upgrades as usual. No injuries on offense or defense, so we're looking good there. Here we go, back home against the Bucks. I think we gotta go with the throwbacks, dude. They're so good. Although, you know what? Let's try the 2010s classic alternate. Kind of reminds me of, you know, the early 2000s Falcons uniforms with Michael Vick. I'm not sure that they were the exact same. They sure look like it, though. Yeah, and they look pretty good to me. I, I just feel like it's really hard to screw up, like, black, red, and white. Yet, they managed to with their uniforms nowadays somehow. It's incredible. And here we go. NFC South action. Who would want to miss this? The 6-6 six six Bucks led by Baker Mayfield, Vita Vea, Levante David. 
will take on the 6-6 six and six Atlanta Falcons led by B. John Robinson, and that's it. Uh, don't show me Ritter, Kyle Pitts, Cordero doesn't matter, Young Way Koo. All right, maybe the team is led by him as well. But it's mainly B. John Robinson. Now, it, it is probably, you know, 6, 7, 8, 9 on the team. 6 for Young Way Koo, 7 for B. John, 8 for Pitts, 9 for Ritter. That is the heart of the team. We might blitz Mayfield heavily today. Good enough defense from Terrell, but Godwin holds on. Rod God, Lions franchise legend. You guys remember Chris Godwin from Lions franchise? I think we signed him in free agency is how he became a part of the team, and he was very, very good for us. They're going to run the ball a lot today with Rashad White, huh? Terrell makes a tackle. Very different approach from what we saw last week. You know, the Jets hardly ever ran the ball. And Rashad White has three carries here already on the first drive. They haven't even made it to midfield yet. So it's going to be a heavy dose of runs here. We got to kind of change our game plan accordingly as Rashad White is shut down by Troy Anderson, but they give him a favorable spot and the Bucks move the chains. All right, we might start stacking boxes a little bit here and say, all right, you know what? You guys want to run the ball every play? We're going to make you earn it. And right now... They're kind of doing a lot of what they want. Rashad White only averaging slightly under three yards per carry, but, you know, they've moved the chains when they've needed to. And now they're going to operate out of gun empty. Second and ten. Throwing over the middle, complete to Mike Evans. The thing is, even though they've been fairly effective running the ball, I know the yards per carry number is not good, but they've been fairly effective running the ball. I would rather them just keep doing that because I'm so worried about these receivers down the field. I'm not really sure that we are going to be able to cover Mike Evans and Chris Godwin consistently. So if I think our best chance to stop them is just having six in the box and somebody makes a play in the ball carrier, we might just continue to do that. And there's a nice play from Grady Jarrett. The Bucks lose a yard. Make a play, Jeff Okuda. Please sign a contract extension. What are you doing? Just be a Falcon. Can't believe he's played so well, but he's he's been better than A.J. Terrell. Wouldn't you agree? I think so. He's been fantastic. Mike Hughes' coverage has been pretty good, too. I feel like our DBs actually have played better than maybe I've given them credit for. Obviously, you know, you're going to allow catches over the course of a game. It's not just going to be three and out every time as the Bucks convert with a field goal chance here. And 3 nothing is now the score. But, you know, I, I think overall we've made a lot of great plays defensively. And I might want to keep this group of DBs together. Now, the safeties actually have been a different story. Jesse Bates makes me upset probably about once an episode on average. I don't think it happened last episode. Maybe it did, actually. Maybe it did. <laughs> but, um... You know, he, he should be good. I don't know. It, it, people wanted me to trade him at the trade deadline. That was never going to happen. The Falcons' big, massive signing in free agency. You want me to erase <laughs> after half a season in the franchise series? Absolutely not. I'm going to go read option. Ritter keeps it. Going to get one. Third and six. Third and six. Who wants to get open? We're going to go over the middle. Julio Jones converts. Bucks legend, Julio revenge game. Man, man, I, I honestly hope that I forget Julio Jones was ever a Titan or a Buck. And who knows if he's even going to play in 2023. I think healthy Julio Jones could still be a contributor for a team. I don't think it's going to be like Randy Moss level like Titans or anything. I think Julio could still, you know, do some stuff, but has not had a chance as I record this right now on the 1st of September. Move the chains, get Drake London a reception. Second and four, Tyler Algier in the game. We got some blocks for him as well. Tyler Algier getting shifty, gets 10 plus. Making a lot of hot routes here. We got to snap the ball. Oh my goodness. And Ritter's fumbled the ball. Joe Tryon Shuenka recovers. That is so frustrating. So I, I put a lot of different routes on the field there. I thought I set up a really nice play which was, I believe, a slot fade from Cordero Patterson. No, no, I put Patterson on a drag. Pitts was on a streak. And then Julio, we put on 
I don't want to call it a deep in. We'll just say an in, right? And then so I was going to have an option reading this side of the field. And and Julio just stops moving. I just, I guess that was just how bad the route was. I, I just don't know why he hesitates here. Right here. He slowed down and that's when I completely paused. It's not the first time that's happened in this series. And it seems minor, but look at it from this angle. He just stops moving. Right when we would think about getting the ball, you know, across the middle. Just, I just very, very annoyed by that. Uh, and that was... Oh, yeah, we fumbled. Yeah, that's a turnover. Okay. Second and seven. Throw over the middle. They're dunking it down. Ooh, big hit by Jesse Bates. We had him playing in the flat. He delivered a huge shot to Rashad White. Only gets a yard. Except, you know, it's great that he's making plays underneath. I'd like to see him make a play over the top. Just the opposing team, the CPU, never really throws the ball over the top. And they've got great blocks. Chris Godwin gets a huge play. I hope this is holding. I think this could be coming back. Unless it's like illegal contact or something like we've seen all the time. It is coming back. Going to be a hold on the rookie out of North Dakota State, Cody Mock. Third and 16. Instead of first and 10. But yeah, I mean, have you noticed that the CPU never really throws the ball down the field? Hardly ever. And that's been a problem before from the CPU. Mayfield under pressure. Classic third and long throw away. And, and that's going to set up a punt. I just don't get it. I talked about this in the last episode. There's no problem really throwing it away on third down. Unless you're going to punt afterwards. Like you, you shouldn't do that. Oh, why did you receive it that way? And we're down at the six. They're going double A gap. Begging for us to run the ball right at him. And we got caught up on a block. Bijan only gets five. Could have been a huge play. Bringing up Levante David into the B gap. We're going to work off play action. He's bluffing the blitz. Ritter rolling out. We're going to throw on the run. Find Julio Jones. First down. And we're kind of out of the back of our own end zone by a lot now. I always talk about second and ten runs. But I really like the look that they're giving us. So we're going to try and make something happen. Tried to get fancy and cut it back. Sets up third and five. Not really the big player we're looking for. I think we would have had more success if we just ran it the way it was designed to be run. Now third and five. Could be a little bit tougher to convert. I have a feeling that... Is that a corner in the box? No, it's Antoine Winfield Jr. I think he's going to drop back and take away Drake London. I would like to throw that curl. We're going to dink it down, though, to Jonu Smith. He's going to be real close, and they're going to give him the first down. I really wanted to throw that curl, but thought we just have a better chance getting Jonu Smith yards after catch. That's exactly what happens. And we're going to snap the ball before they have a chance to review it. Not exactly how you want to run based off a trap, but Bijan Robinson looking for space and finds it. Bijan Robinson crosses the goal line, touchdown. That is how you manufacture points. That in no shape or form should ever be a touchdown. But Bijan is so special, he's able to take an inside run, a trap, which is just, you know, if it's blocked really well, you get 15 yards up the field. He bounces it outside, does a little stutter, makes a man miss, and then has the speed to turn it into a touchdown. Unbelievable run from Bijan Robinson. You really, I mean, you definitely don't script it like this. The way you really think he's going to go here is back through this lane. In real life, probably. Wouldn't have really been a viable option in Madden. Cuts it to the outside. Great block from Cordero Patterson and Drake London up the field. And then Bijan's got to find a way to make these guys miss. Well, you can't continue it up the sideline because that's where the block's going. Winfield Jr. forced to the sideline. So you try to cut it back. Juke move would have been perfect there. Bijan with a hard cut. And then over-pursued by Carlton Davis. And then it's just a foot race. Levante David, within arm's length, cannot catch up. Touchdown, Bijan Robinson. What a play. Yeah, we're going after Mayfield. Caden Ellis reads play action the whole way. Knew the quarterback was keeping it. And Baker loses eight. Gets absolutely crushed by Caden Ellis having just a remarkable season. 
Baker kind of sold play action. Caden Ellis wasn't buying it, though. And now we might see a give up drive from Atlanta. They're just going to run the ball. Ellis scoops up Rashad White. It's maybe a yard. And then third and 17. What hope do you have to convert here? Basically none. Got to drop back. Play good defense. They're targeting Clark Phillips. He makes the interception. Atlanta football. Baker, what are you doing, buddy? You got Caden Ellis trailing. Clark Phillips just sitting over there. Baker with a classic turnover. Starting by throwing the ball. We're going to throw it. Cordero Patterson, nice catch. Escaping out of the pocket for seemingly no reason. Classic move. Going to run the football again. Bijan Robinson doing Bijan Robinson things. Six rushes for 90 yards and a touchdown. What are we supposed to do? He's not getting, you know, 20 or 30 carries a game anymore. Trying to take some of the, the tread off the tires that we put on through the first half of the season. But he's just so unbelievable that he's still going to get, you know, 100 yards a game easily. And Cordero Patterson gets 10 plus. 15 yards for him on his first carry of the game. Like, I love him back there. Algier's been a nice change of pace guy at times in short yardage. Hasn't always been super effective. We'll see if we can punch it in here. First and goal. We're going at Vita Vea. Just be stronger. We got blocks. Algier powers in. Touchdown. We are running wild on the Bucks here in Atlanta. Tyler Algier just powers right through Shaq Barrett, who evidently wanted none of it. Baker, wow, wide open receiver. Cade Otten, the tight end. Might be the first time we've called his name today. Man coverage has been a godsend for us. They're going to pitch outside. we got to get that edge. Even if they got, you know, five or six yards up the middle there, even if they got eight, would have been a whole lot better than 20-plus to the outside. So we really had to get outside with Trey Anderson, try to force that back to the inside. Here's a screen. Anderson all over it, but doesn't have the speed to close. Rashad White spins and gets more than the first down required. Thought we read that entirely well. Bad angle at the end, I think, caused that to be a way more successful play than it should have been. So that's my fault there. And they're going to try it again. We have redemption. Troy Anderson shuts it down. Bucks only get a yard. Third and one. Could be a big play here for Tampa. And Chris Godwin with the catch underneath. First down Tampa. Just over a minute to play here in the first half. And that quickly becomes less than 50 seconds. Two minute drill quickly comes down to one minute. And they're just content to take a little bit of time off the clock here. I don't know if they're really trying to get into the end zone. But what's clear is that they do not want us to get the football back. We haven't really been a quick strike offense. It's just been a lot of runs, so don't really know why they're too concerned. Under 40 seconds to play now, second and nine. Throwing toward the end zone, direction of Chris Godwin, but it's no good. Third and nine. Please shut it down. I think we're covering it fairly well. Baker ends up just throwing it away. I think that's a pretty good stop from our defense. They're gonna try for three. It'll make it a one possession game, I suppose. But that's a big win for us. We'll have 25 seconds or so to try and get on the board. How do we wanna play this? Do we just wanna try and air it out? Or with three timeouts, do we try to go like run, 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 get to midfield-ish, and then kick a field goal? That could be an option. See what this kick return has in store. Need Cordero Patterson to show us something. Oh, nearly found a crease. Might just air it out down the field. Julio Jones, deep down the field, can't connect. After that first shot for Julio down the field, I changed my setting and I tried to change it so that we actually had a farther window to throw. Because I feel like, you know what, I'm, I'm doing the, the placement down the field. It's just not going as far as I want it to to actually make an impact on deep balls. So I've changed it to far, and now I'm going to change the sensitivity from uh, 8 down to 6. And hopefully that means that our deep ball is going to become elite. We're going to run the ball here. Bijan with some power scooped up. We'll call a timeout. That really could have been a huge play. We're going to run the ball again. Or do we try to hit him off play action here? 
did not change that to what I wanted it to be. John o. Smith gonna block. I guess we'll just run it. See what happens. If we get stopped here, it really shouldn't matter a ton. But we're not going to. Bijan up the field. We'll call a timeout. Now we're out of them. I mean, it's gonna be so tough to get into field goal range here. We might as well just run the ball. And if we can somehow get to the the 45 and six seconds, great. But expectations are not high. And wow, how do we not get the edge there? Bijan swallowed up. And that brings us to the end of the first half. 14 to six, we're out ahead right now. Bucks offense really hasn't been much as predicted, but their defense hasn't been anything special. We're already at 136 yards pass or rushing. So we've dominated at the point of attack. Blocking's been good. Obviously, the individual effort from some of our backs has been fantastic as well. Not only Bijan, but Cordero. Algiers done his job, has a touchdown in this game. Ooh. The Saints are really putting it on the 9-3 and three Panthers right now. Thielen having a nice game at the half. Bryce Young trying to pull away from New Orleans. Get number 10 on the season. Browns crushing the Jags. Still early, though. There could be a comeback. Start of half number two. Just, oh, I hate RPOs because I'm asking to throw a pick six. We'll see what that CB does on the outside. We're just going to run the ball to Bijan. Watching Julio the entire time, but I mean, if they're going to give us eight yards, we're going to take it. Second and two, working off play action. Underneath for Julio. London working back to the football, makes the catch. Did I say for Julio? I didn't mean that. I totally, totally meant for that to go to Drake London. That's why we wanted those two routes to run into each other so that we could throw it to Julio Jones. I mean, uh, Drake London, of course. That's who that was intended for. What do you think I was throwing to Julio? Would I say that? No, I don't, I, that was a mistake. Don't worry about that. First and 10, working off play action. They don't buy it. We're throwing for Cordero. That's way too dangerous. Let's dial it back a second here. Jeez. Second and 10, throwing to Drake London. Got a block from Bijan and we couldn't end up getting the first. We got bumped. Otherwise, London would have had maybe 15, could have been more. Third and inches. Safeties rotate. Winfield drops down into the box. Run the ball to Bijan. We're past the safeties. Bijan past one, past another, and then tackled in the end by Ryan Neal, working back to the ball carrier. Bijan Robinson, dude. Special player. Algier into the game. Oh, we got a block, but nope. We're going to try and manufacture a touchdown here. We have an unbelievable size advantage with Kyle Pitts on the outside. We're going to give him a shot. Go up and get it. Kyle Pitts cannot bring it in. All right, we're going to take our three, make it 17 to six. Is that a waste of a third down spot? I don't know. You got to like Kyle Pitts one-on-one. -on -one. That's a good matchup. Even if we don't convert, I think it's worth a shot. We just jump off sides or is it a false start? Tell me that's a false start. Exactly what it is. Right tackle jumped. It's going to be second and about five or six. Oh, it's a run. Jesse Bates cannot bring down Rashad White. He's got space to roam. Richie Grant takes out his legs, but it's a huge play for the young running back out of Arizona State. <sighs> Tried to get to him earlier, man. All right. Bucks very close to Atlanta territory. Get to the outside. We'll take that. Second and 10. We're going to pass commit here. And that's exactly what it is. Okuda's close, but... Baker just fit that pass into Mike Evans, and we really haven't talked about him too much today. Only two catches for 19 yards. I feel like the Madden CPU often has a difficult time utilizing their best receivers. You know, oftentimes it's just the tight end or the fullback making big plays as Baker's going to check down to Chris Godwin. It really, you know, it, when you play the, the Vikings, is it ever Justin Jefferson that goes off? I don't think so. It's always somebody else. TJ Hawkinson will always have a big game. I think when we played them, Jordan Addison really got going. And then, you know, the Bucks' leading receiver is who today? Kate Otten, maybe, at this point? I could see it being Chris Godwin as well, but I, my money would probably be on Kate Otten. Here's third and six. If we get a stop on the Bucks. Man coverage. Baker 
checking it down and fires incomplete as the pass was not hauled in. I think that's Trey Palmer, the rookie out of Nebraska. And the Bucks will settle for a field goal try. Real barn burner here in Atlanta. Going to be 17 to nine pending the kick, and it is good. So, not really going to change too much on offense. Our defense has played well. They can't get into the end zone. That's exactly what you want. Give it to Bijan. We got a block. Bijan Robinson. Ooh, could not get past Ryan Neal, who wrestles him down. It's still a 10-yard game. I mean, Bijan's kind of a cheat code in this series. We've learned at this point. He's just going to be pretty much unstoppable. <laughs> and the blocking's been good. The Falcons' offensive line's not terrible. But, you know, it's also not amazing. to roll out here. Trying to outrun him. Can't do it. Yaya Diaby. Rookie out of Louisville. Ends up making the play. Yeah, I don't know. Just I thought the coverage was really good. I was looking at the right side of the field. Couldn't get it to Kyle Pitts. And we'll try to give Algier a shot. Trap was just not blocked well. It was a second and long, like, give up type play. Uh, probably should have opted to do something else, obviously. You guys know I hate second and long runs. Well, why do I do them then? Sometimes I think I can catch the defense napping, you know? Get it to Drake London. That's the weirdest animation ever, where he goes up for the football and then drifts away from where the ball, the, the path of the ball actually is. So, never had a chance to make that catch. And we'll have to punt. Very annoying. But here is Bradley Pinion. Bet you guys missed him. We haven't been doing this a whole lot lately. Good coverage. They're setting up to run the ball here. And I keep thinking that it's going to be play action. And then it's not. Rashad White nearly got away there. He's averaging about five yards per carry, having a really nice game. But it's only really been a couple of plays. I think we've done a pretty good job of containing him as well. I mean, their offense hasn't done much, right? We're coming up to the end of the third quarter. I think we just have to commit to covering the, the run when it looks like it could be. It's usually not going to be play action. Rashad White finds a gap again. Just uh, got to be more disciplined to our gaps. And I don't think they're going to be able to run the ball on us as well as they are right now. It's just two bad plays in a row. We're going to figure it out. It's going to be a run. We got to make a play with Terrell. He slowed him down, I guess. All right, we got to bring out, like, at least four defensive linemen now. Well, I guess three, four. We're going to bring the linebackers up, so it's five close. It's got to be a false start. Tell me we did not jump. Please. Another false start. That's a killer. Third and inches obviously has a way higher conversion rate than third and five, or close to third and six, of course. It's the second time in this game that this has happened. And we're really catching breaks. The Bucks are undisciplined. Ball pops up in the air, nearly intercepted by Caden Ellis off a deflection. It'll be fourth and five for Tampa, and they will be in a position where they have to go for it. They don't have to, but they're going to choose to. This would be a long field goal. Maybe if they were closer, this would be a different choice. Trying to cover the middle. Wow, that's just a great throw. Great route from Chris Godwin to come back towards the football, get open on the comeback, and that is exactly what we didn't need. This is probably a run. Fill a gap, make a play. I had to cut back. We're getting crushed by Rashad White right now. Hey, welcome to the 4-4. We're going to make plays to stop the running game. Here's a run outside, and we just got blocked. We're... <laughs> Luke Gadecki injured on the play. Right guard for the Bucks this year? We'll see. We'll see. Two-point attempt for Tampa to tie things up. It's going to be a run up the middle, and it's shut down. Troy Anderson exploding off the ball, making a play. Caden Ellis there as well. But that's Troy Anderson using his athleticism to stop that big two-point conversion. And we're going to hold on to our lead. It is slim. We still have momentum, though. Still have momentum. Got to run the ball. That last, uh, last set of downs was just not what we wanted, clearly. Patterson in motion. That's fun. Running power, but we didn't expect to. Bijan with speed. John and Smith there, we would have had a way better blocker. I mean, they're getting torn apart on the ground. And because we're not running at the strength of their defense. We are not running really ever at Vita Vea. We're trying to get to the outside and use speed when they might have a power advantage. So we go for a dive there, only get one. Bijan looks in rough shape. 
and he's going to be out for a play. He looked like he was in trouble. All right, well, hopefully it's not too bad. We're rolling out. We're under pressure. We're sacked. Devin White is just too fast. Just way too fast. I don't really know what we could have done differently on that one. Oh, I mean, we, we were getting screamed at already. I don't think there was anything we could do. You know, sometimes the uh, other team just makes a play. It's not necessarily something we've done wrong. Maybe on that one, we'll Shaq Barrett in for the sack. It's third and 29. I mean, it's falling apart. Hey, should we run slot two buck? It's seven pages of slot two buck. I don't want to run this. I mean, we're taking a shot down the field. Julio, somebody went off press. We might actually have this lob here for Patterson. Cannot connect. Zion McCollum in coverage, celebrating like he did anything. And we will punt. I mean, the wheels are falling off here. This has not been a good last couple of drives for us. Got to play defense. Oh, it's play action. Oh, AJ Terrell nearly with a takeaway. Baker threw it right to his numbers. Could not end up making the play. That would have been huge. Could have been the game for us. Instead, it's second and 10, under four minutes to play. Holding on to a two point lead. Check down. Jesse Bates cannot wrap up, but forces Rashad White out of bounds. Third and nine. It's pretty much. It's as good of a spot as we're going to find. Third and nine. We are going to press, but we're playing cover four, so we really shouldn't get beat over the top here. I have to see what happens, of course. And they're throwing over the middle. <sighs> I was worried about the check down. It wasn't necessarily the coverage responsibility to play Mike Evans there on that in. And that is a first down for Tampa Bay. He's starting to have a better game. I, I, st I think Chris Godwin's probably the... Uh, team leader in receiving yards. At this point, Anderson cannot stop Kate Otten from catching it. And Tampa gets five. Tristan Wirfs is injured, though. That would be a huge injury at the end of this game. They're starting left tackle going down. I mean, we got to start sending a bit of pressure, right? It's going to be Zach Harrison against not Tristan Wirfs. Got to like our odds. Quick throw! and caught by Mike Evans. How are we not there to cover that? First and goal. I'm starting to worry about the run here. That's exactly what it is. Rashad White, I mean, just makes himself a human torpedo and impales Richie Grant. Gets in the end zone for the touchdown. Oh boy. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's funny to look at. Not funny for us though. Tampa with a lot of momentum. They're going to take an odd 22 to 17 lead. If I were them, I'd probably go for two in this spot. Then at least you can play for a missed extra point. Two minute drill for the offense. We can run the ball. We have two timeouts plus the two minute warning. Still very much in this game. Got to take some momentum back and we need, need Bijan to get loose. Oh, I wonder if they want us to run Falcons bench. I don't want to do that. We don't have to throw right now. We don't have to. Read option. Oh, this is going to go so poorly. Bijan's getting it no matter what here. I don't care what the read is. There's Bijan Robinson. First down. He's got 171 yards rushing. We're going to go no, uh, no huddle. Snap the ball quickly. Bijan, outrun him. That's a face mask. You can't do that. Bijan ripped down by his face. That's going to be an automatic first down, 15 yards, and suddenly we're to midfield. We do not have to pass the ball. Stop only suggesting pass plays. Two minutes and nine seconds remain. We're going to get another another timeout on the two-minute warning. There goes Algier. A two-yard run isn't amazing, but it is fine. I'm not really too bothered by that. I'll consider a run still at second and eight. I wonder if we can catch him napping here with a draw. We're going to try it. Cordero looking for space, and he's hurt. Vita Vea makes an incredible play to shut him down. We only get two yards, and now one of our best players is jogging off the field. 
It's going to be third and six. I don't know where Bijan is, but obviously it's a concern right now. That's part of how we were expecting to move the chains. Third down and six, Algier in the game. Four down territory, obviously. We don't need all these six at once, although it would be nice. Over the middle, complete to Drake London. That's the first down and more. Only the eighth completion for Drake or for uh, Desmond Ritter today. Four of them have gone to Drake London. Algier still on the field. We might go QB draw here. Space them out a bit. They've got pretty much nobody in the box to shut down Desmond Ritter. I don't know why QB draw has the turnaround. I forgot that the game sucks. Why does it make you do that? Igwe Buike is going to come in to replace Cordero Patterson. Algier still in the game. Where is Bijan, dude? Where is Bijan? Up the middle, how do you make that play if you're Levante David? How do you make that play? I don't know why one of our teammates is pushing Desmond Ritter because that was incomplete. That doesn't feel helpful in this spot. And now it's a tough to convert third and 11. Four down territory. Don't need it all at once. We're going to Kyle Pitts. It's going to be fourth and four. We have one timeout. So we need to convert here. I mean, no way around it. Is Bijan back on the field? He is not really considering a run here. I know that seems insane. But I like I like how they're lined up. They're almost begging for us to run the ball. We have a power back in. It's not Bijan. But if we block this well, away from Vita Vea, we can get four yards. And we blocked it fairly well. Algier close. And they're going to give it to him. Block still moving. Going to take a bit of a runoff here. 40 seconds to play. We're going to run the ball again. Three down linemen. Maybe not even. Algier up the middle with space. Seven yards. We only lost a second on the no huddle. They're begging for us to... To uh, pass the ball. We're going to call a timeout. That's our final timeout. 20 seconds to play. We can't get sacked anymore. It'd be bad anyway, but we, we really cannot now. We might take a shot to the end zone here, depending on what happens. We're going to. London, go up and get it. We can't even get our receivers a chance on those high points. It's tough. I wonder if we're going to run verticals again. It's the only suggestion. Maybe give Kyle Pitts a chance. Scotty Miller can space it out. Kyle Pitts, up the seam, make the catch, touchdown, Kyle Pitts! With less than, what, 20 seconds to play? We're going to take a one-point lead. Obviously going to go for two to try to make this a field goal game. But we have blown it, made a comeback, and taken the lead. Ritter with a nice ball to Kyle Pitts. You got to know you can't play soft coverage like that in that spot. Shame on the Bucks. We go up for good reason. Bijan still not appearing. We just challenge them. We're gonna run left. I don't even see Vita Vea. He's not on the field. We gotta run the ball. Algier, space and power, end two. 25, 22. And the Bucks will have 13 seconds, although three timeouts to try to get into field goal range. We're gonna kick it deep. I don't like the idea of a squib kick here. I just think we'd put him in to, you know, good field position, which we wouldn't really wanna do. So, 13 seconds, three timeouts for Tampa Bay. Watch Chris Godwin, watch Mike Evans. Anybody else, whatever. There's Chris Godwin. Not a bad first play for him, you know. It's not a bad first play. We're playing soft coverage. I don't want to get beat over the top. That's the one thing. If they go down underneath, I guess that's fine. Uh, but that should be the game. Three seconds to play. They're not going to get to the 40. This is the final play of the game. Three seconds to go. Everybody get deep. Everybody back. Here it is. Bucks need a miracle. Throwing towards Godwin, and it's intercepted by Terrell. Game over. Falcons end up with the win.
We improved to 7-6. and six. Close one against the 6-6 six and six Bucks. We almost blew it. And we lost B. John Robinson for the final. Yeah, there he is on the bench. We lost him for the final, like, couple of drives there almost. Or at least the final drive. Made it a little bit more challenging to win. Bijan, obviously, very good if you've seen the series. And uh, that, was, that was a tough win, man. That was a tough win. Another game of not throwing an interception. It's because it's really not throwing the ball very much. Baker with no touchdowns and two picks. Did not play very well. And as soon as they started getting into Rashad White a lot, we really struggled to stop him. He broke seven tackles to Bijan's one. Although Bijan made some guys miss. 17 carries for 173 yards and the touchdown. Algier, 31 yards and a touchdown as well. Patterson, 17 yards and was injured. And then receiving, Godwin ends up as the number one receiver. But of course, yeah, Kate Otten has 49 yards. Even Rashad White had five catches. For us, it's the typical stuff. Pitts with a touchdown when we needed it really badly. Went for uh, Julio deep down the field a couple times. Couldn't really connect with him. And then 68 yards for London. He's a consistently pretty good player for us. Caden Ellis had a sack and 10 total tackles. Ellis with one for loss. Same with Mike Hughes, Grady Jarrett. And then interceptions for Clark Phillips. And then Terrell with the garbage time pick at the end. Um, oof. Ended up being way too close. But, you know, close games are more fun. So, not too mad about it from that standpoint. But would have liked to, uh, you know, go and smash him, obviously. We got some upgrades. I think Fatigue was just sitting in for Bijan. I think, you know, we use him so much. He's obviously had just an insane season. And, yeah, he's going to be a little bit fatigued at this point in the year. Getting as many carries and touches overall as he's got. Plus one juke move, plus two spin is not a bad upgrade, though. Juke now into the 90s. Spin in a good spot. Okay. I think Richie Grant, I mean, tackle's low, but I'd love to get a speed boost. Let's go hybrid. That might impact man coverage and hopefully speed. Plus two to man, plus one to zone, plus one to acceleration, plus one to tackle. That's a really good set of upgrades. And that was a huge win for us to improve to seven and six. And of course, we ran the ball down their throat. That was the game plan. And it was obviously extremely successful. So I think maybe we're not going to get an XP boost here, but maybe some morale for the offensive line slash the running back could be very, very nice. Even if it impacts like not only Bijan, but Cordero and uh, Tyler Algier. But left end, Bijan Robinson will have plus five break tackle and carry for the next two games, which is nice. So uh, we're going to bring Bijan over from left end, get him some carries. And that'll be nice. But our offensive lineman, plus five run block finesse and run block power for the next two games. So, if you thought we were running the ball successfully the past couple of weeks, I would hate to be the Panthers when we play them in week 15. That'll be the next episode. They are 10 and 3. Bucks, of course, fall to 6 and 7. Saints as well. All right, Panthers might be the real deal. Can't wait to play them again. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.